Tucked away in the mountains of southeastern France lies the village of Le Chambon sur Lyon. Exuding all things French, Le Chambon makes a wonderful location for a music festival. Not just any music festival, but a musical festival featuring some of the world's top violin instructors and gifted students. David Russell of the University of North Carolina in Charlotte is one of those instructors. We meet David at the train depot in Les Chambon, a place where during the Nazi occupation of France during the Second World War, people met, people of two different faiths. There's a story of great courage and great faith that unfolded here at Les Chambon, and David has been drawn to it. A Protestant Christian, David is a man who thinks deeply and desires to integrate the larger questions of life, meaning, and purpose into his art. When I look at these train tracks at Le Chambon, I think about the Jewish people the, and children who were arriving on those trains knowing that they were coming to a place that would give them safe harbor. While others, perhaps even their own family, were arriving at a different train depot, uh, like uh, perhaps places such as Auschwitz. The difference between these train tracks and the tracks at Auschwitz is all the difference in the world. This place was a place where they were going to be saved because of the power of the faith of the people of Le Chambon. The other were tracks of despair that led only to death. And how marvelous to be on a train that led to Le Chambon sur Lignon. During the festival, David was asked to give a concert and lecture in a historic venue in La Chambon. The very church where some 70 years ago Pastor André Trochme urged his congregation to resist the Nazi occupation with the weapons of the Spirit. These devout Protestant Christians led a secret and highly organized movement which resulted in the rescue of nearly 5,000 Jewish refugees from certain death. In the audience that evening were not only members of the congregation and the village, but many of David's colleagues and students were there. Surprisingly, the spiritual nature of the works of Brahms, Bach, and Bloch are oftentimes separated from the interpretations of modern artists, but not with David. Um, actually, two of my colleagues who are Jewish came up after the concert, and they were talking about that particular piece. One of them, who's a violinist of some renown, came and said, you know, I have never heard that piece played quite the way that you played it. It's usually played to show off the technique. He said, but this, this touched my soul because you played it like a prayer. In the narrative of David's lecture, he wove themes of morality, faith, and conscience. Even though the Holocaust was relatively recent in terms of world history, many were challenged by David's notion that conscience played a big part the in the events at Le Chambon. Well, there was a young lady from France this morning who stopped me on the path and said, thank you for the concert last night. It was wonderful. She said, and it was also unusual. I'm, I've never seen a talk and a concert like that on, a, on a, such a subject. What made you decide to do that? And I talked to her about the events here in Le Chambon and how the power of conscience played such an important role and the faith of these people played an important role. And I questioned, I said, I wonder if the same thing were to happen today. The question is, would you and I respond the way that they did? And it's a, it's a marvelous way to use our art to ask those higher questions, more important questions.
had ever seen a format like that before, and some of them were were genuinely intrigued by the fact that we were playing this music and and talking about what's behind it and relating it to a higher idea, and and uh, it, it uh, created the opportunity to dialogue with several of those students. So you had some conversations. Some conversations about how such an idea came to be to to talk about conscience and uh, and play music and relate the music to the power of conscience and it gave me further opportunity to talk with these students about uh, you know well, or, or to ask them to ask the questions of themselves you know what would I have done then or would I do it if faced with the situations that the people of Le Chambon were faced with it, during World War II would you or would, would I respond the same way would our conscience drive us to help those people? And that's a powerful question. As David travels the world performing and giving master classes, he remains devoted to his family and to his faith. Though respectful of others' beliefs, he continues to strive to integrate his faith and his art to paint a picture of the world that ought to be, a world that gave us the story of Le Chambon. Still, this comes at a cost for him. In all honesty, in my profession, it's incredibly risky for me to reveal my faith because there's an assumption that if you believe, you must not be a very good musician because you can't know the fullness of life. But I see it as my responsibility to say, no, that to the contrary, you'll know the fullness of life with faith in Christ. That's what I hope to accomplish with my art now is to uh, share something deeper than an entertainment experience. I hope to share my faith with others.